Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Shine and today I just want to talk about a few things that uh, I have been just kind of watching and praying about and um, just seeking the Lord about and just getting revelation from the Lord on different things that I've been seeing and the Bible says to watch and pray we have to constantly watch and pray and to not um, be deceived to not be caught up in the world uh, we can't be caught up in social media we can't be caught up in um, materialism or money or fame or notoriety um, we we can't get caught up in this world we have to detach ourselves from the desires from the lustful desires from um, fornication from adultery from greed from homosexuality from sorcery and all kinds of things we have to detach ourselves entertainment evil entertainment um that is not pleasing to god and we are coming into an end like we are really coming into the end of all things I don't know when this world is going to end. I don't know when Jesus is going to come back. But from the looks of it, it looks like it's come he's coming very very soon. And a lot of people um have been talking about the mark of the beast and uh the rapture. I know a lot of a lot of other people have been scared to talk about those things. But when you are in Jesus, you have everything. And even when it seems like you have nothing, you have everything. You have eternal life. And all that God is uh, preparing for you in heaven. Because the Bible says, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The Bible also says, Store up your treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also if we truly believe in god if we truly believe in his promises his promise is yes and amen his promise is for us to live eternal life and have abundance and we can live a, an abundant life here on earth but there's going to come a time where we're going to have to make a decision to say yes lord or or no it's either going to be a yay or nay it's not going to be anything in between because the Bible says the Antichrist will reveal himself first before Jesus Christ, the real Christ, comes back. And so when the Antichrist comes, we have to be like the three Hebrew men. We have to say, no, we are not going to bow down to you. We're going to instead continue to serve the Lord. And if you throw us in the fire, so it, so let it be. If we have to die, so let it be. If we have to get persecuted, so let it be. Because the Bible says those who accept the mark on their right hands or on their foreheads will not enter into the kingdom of God. That means that is game over. Like once you accept the mark of the beast or the number of the beast or the name of the beast on your right hand, on your forehead, it's over. Like it's done. Like there's no eternal life for you. There's there's no acceptance. And so people are wondering like, okay, well, what if I have a tattoo of 
the number of the beast or what if i have um and, and it's like okay yeah you may have had a tattoo or you may have had um something related to that but the antichrist has not come yet the antichrist has not revealed himself yet so therefore god can deliver and restore you he can save your soul from death but you have to have a sorrowful and repentant heart to turn away from the devil because some people get tattoos out of ignorance a lot of people get tattoos out of ignorance um and they don't realize what they're doing to their bodies and i'm not saying that people are getting tattoos of 666 now that's just extreme and to be honest i don't know how that works because god <laughs> god is the one that 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 heals and restores and and saves and and forgives but the bible does say that when the antichrist comes and when he uh forces people to take the mark the number or the name when that comes and when people choose to worship the beast or the image they're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. They're not going to enter into the, into the kingdom of God. And there's no, there's no going back. Like once you accept it, there's no going back. And so we have to make up in our minds now to say, no, we are not going to worship Satan. We're going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're going to worship the one and only true God, Jesus Christ, who is the only way, truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except by him, okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are free from eternal death. Now we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, now we, we are accepted and adopted into God's family. We are accepted. Not because of good works. No, it's because of our faith. We are saved by grace through faith it is the gift of god it is the eternal gift of god the bible says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our lord so it is not by our works that that we are saved because the bible says if if you try to follow the whole law but you disobey one part of the law you disobey the whole entire law you disobey all of it and so it is not us that saves ourselves it is jesus he paid the price for our sins he paid the price for us to live eternal life he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again the third day he rose again because he gave us the chance to live eternal life all we have to do is believe whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and so a lot of people will say, well, there's more than one way to get to heaven. False. There is no evidence. There is no proof that you can get into heaven another way outside of Jesus. That is a slap in the face to God. Because he took the time to come into this world, to come out of heaven. He came from heaven, okay, all the way down to earth to save us so that we may have eternal life and then and then someone comes along and say well there's another way what other way is there there is no other way 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by him. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. If you believe in God the Father, then you also believe in Jesus. And you also believe in the Holy Spirit. Like you can't believe one without the other. You can't believe Jesus without God the Father. You can't believe God the Father without Jesus. You can't believe the Holy Spirit without God the Father and, and God the Son. Like these three are one. And so I, I've heard stories of people saying that they believe and Jesus but they don't believe in God the Father or vice versa and it's like how can you believe in one without the other like you have to believe you have to believe the Trinity <laughs> you have to believe all he operates as the Father as the Son and as the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives within us because he gives us the power to to do supernatural things that we can't do on our own. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so that's why we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Any other gods is a distraction, is a false god. They are in the way of the one and only true God. Because Satan wants to deceive you and feed you lies and make you think that there's more than one God. There's no other God but the one and only true God. And God will show you who's God. He will show you who's God. I am a living witness. And so many of my other brothers and sisters in Christ will witness to you that there is only one God. And we are willing to die for him because he is the one and only true living God. And he is the only one that can give us eternal life in heaven how how else will you get to heaven how else can you get to heaven without jesus because we can't we can't enter in just from our own works or just from us being self-righteous like self-righteousness is not going to make it into heaven it is by his righteousness we are righteous by faith by our faith in jesus that's how we are able to enter into the kingdom of heaven when you read the book of john when you read john chapter 3 verse 16 through 18 you will see that god wants to save his people but it's going to take his power and his strength. He's, it's going to take his son to deliver us from our old fleshly ways, from our old sinful desires, lustful desires. How else would we be able to live a righteous lifestyle, a, a, a lifestyle that is in order if we don't have someone to tell us what's right and what's wrong that's why we have the bible we have the bible because it's life instructions it gives us instructions on what's righteous and what's unrighteous what's true and what's not true what's good and what's bad or what's good and what's evil and we have to live by it daily and it's not us that lives by it alone God gives us the power and the strength to overcome all lustful desires, all sinful desires by the power of the Holy Spirit that works in us. And we continue when we continue to pray without ceasing, when we continue to to pray to the Lord and ask him, Lord, deliver me from 
this, whatever it is that you may be dealing with, whatever it is that you may be struggling with, deliver me from my finances, deliver me from debts, deliver me from uh, uh, pornography, deliver me from homosexuality, De deliver me, oh God. Deliver me from addictions to drugs, addictions to alcohol. Deliver me, oh God. Deliver me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And the Lord is listening. He is listening to you. He wants you to have a sorrowful and repentant heart. He wants you to confess your sins before him and ask him to forgive you of these sins and even when you may go back to it again consistently ask the lord to forgive you and i promise you i am speaking from experience he will deliver you out of your sins when you think oh man this is too big for me oh man this is too hard for me to get rid of i can't get rid no you can get rid of it but you can't get rid of it on your own you have to have god to work in your life you have to invite him into your life and ask him to remove all filth cleanse you the bible says submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you that means you have to submit to, <laughs> to the authority of god resist the devil flee from temptation run from temptation and the bible says satan will flee from you bye-bye Bye-bye, you have no authority over my life anymore. You have no authority over my family. You have no authority over my children. You have no authority over the next generation. You have no authority, Satan. You are defeated in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That's how you got to talk to the enemy. You got to you got to come straight up at the enemy and say, "Look, devil, I'm not playing with you anymore. I'm not going to fall into this lustful desire. I'm not going to fall into the into this temptation anymore. I'm going to follow Jesus from this day forward. I'm going to walk in my authority as God has called me to walk in." I'm going to read my Bible every single day. I'm going to get into the word of God. I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to get back into what, what God has called me to be, to be. I'm going to walk in my purpose. I'm going to walk in my purpose. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm not going to fall into these temptations like I used to fall into. Got me uh, embarrassed. Got me messed up. From, from head to toe, I'm looking crazy, feeling crazy, feeling foolish, feeling disgusted. No more, Satan. You have no authority over my finances anymore. You have no authority. You are defeated in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. And when you start talking like that, I, ooh, but you have to first submit to God. You cannot, you cannot expect to defeat the enemy if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. You have to submit to God first, then resist the devil, and then he will flee from you. That's how it works. That's order. God, God is a God of order. Okay. Um, another thing that I have learned is women. I've seen a lot of women trying to, um, gain authority over men. The Bible says women are not to teach or usur usurp authority over men. Okay. So we cannot, um, rise up over men and expect God to be pleased with us because we're walking out of order. Now, we got the world confused. The world is looking at us like, I thought the men was supposed to be in charge. I thought the men was supposed to, to be uh, in order. I thought the men was the leaders. What, what happened? What happened? 
Men, rise up. Rise up. Take your rightful place. Take your rightful place. We as wives, I'm a wife myself. The Bible says, wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. And what I have learned is why we as wives ought to submit to our husbands, ought to help our husbands. We ought to be their help meet. We're supposed to help our husbands. That is our... Um, that is our first purpose. That is, that is our first ministry, our, our marriage. Marriage is ministry. And so if we are out of line and if we are trying to usurp authority over our husbands or if we're trying to um, be the leader or the head of the household, no, we are not the head, okay? And a lot of women say, I'm the neck, nah, I'm... I'm not the head, okay? <laughs> I am his help meet. That is what I am here for, to help my husband to do whatever God has called him to do. And when God is calling him to do something, he if he's walking in his alignment, the whole family will walk in their alignment. The whole family will walk in place. So we have to walk in order. We have to walk in order not women first then men then children or children first then woman no god husband wife children that's how it's supposed to go that's the order that god has designed for each and every household that's how it's supposed to be it's not supposed to be backwards it's not supposed to be mixed is not supposed to be women then god then no god husband wife children period that's how it's supposed to go and when the next generation comes it's supposed to continue god husband wife children and so we have to we have to come back to the knowledge of the creation roles what are the creation roles <laughs> What is the husband's role? To provide, to protect, to be the priest of, of his household? What is the woman's role? What is the wife's role? To be the help me to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord, to care for and nurture their children? What is the children's roles? To obey their parents um, as unto the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. Uh, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. That's what children are supposed to do. That's that's their role. Their role is to obey their parents as unto the Lord. Now, if the parents is telling the child to do something that they're not supposed to do, then that's not unto the Lord. Then now you have to go back into, okay, Lord, my mom or my dad is not tell is not telling me to do something right. Lord, I pray that you will fix this in the name of Jesus. So don't do something that your parent is telling you to do if that is outside of the will of God. If your parent is telling you to smoke weed, obviously that is not the will of God, okay? Um, so do do what your parents tell you to do as unto the Lord. If, if that's in the Lord's, if that's the Lord's assignment for you, if that's what the Lord is telling you to do, you obey your parents. If your parents is telling you to clean up your room, I know that's God's will. Clean up your room. <laughs> if he, if your parents is telling you to wash the dishes, wash the dishes. So this is my daughter. So I'm. I know it's time. It's time for me to wrap it up. But <laughs> just go. Just stay in alignment with God's will. We have to stop trying to live. On our own, we have to stop trying to to walk in our own path because we're gonna end up in destruction every single time. So, God bless you all. I pray that you all will uh, study, continue to study and meditate on God's word day and night. I love you all. Have a blessed evening. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.